So the issues that have come to light with this simple box joint jig. Uh, first of all, sawdust. The reason you have a relief underneath the cross-cut sled fence here is so that any sawdust goes into the relief slot and doesn't tend to push the workpiece forward. But that's not uh, going to work for the fence of the jig here. And as the jig fence moves along, it will start to rise up as it sits on top of this sawdust. Now, if your table saw has good dust extraction, that might not be a problem. The dust extraction through the curve slot of the sled here, though, is not brilliant. So I have to clear this occasionally. Now, this is actually pretty stable, and it doesn't seem as though the fence actually needs to touch the bed of the sled it's riding on. I could stop the fence here and that would alleviate the problem. And when I next rebuild the fence I might do just that. Uh, the second thing which also causes the fence to ride up, and of course if the fence rides up then you're losing registration between the half nut and the threaded rod and you're beginning to introduce a little bit of play. The second thing that could do that is the paper scale here. Now the paper scale is very useful, I don't think I could do this without it. Uh, but it should be taken into account when you're setting the distance between the half nut and the thread, uh, which is to be no distance at all. It needs to engage fully to remove any play. And then we come to the third issue, which is clamping, which we mentioned in the second video. And it's okay with a tall workpiece, you can clamp to the jig fence, but you can't clamp a short workpiece like these boxes I want to do next. Because if you did clamp, you'd be clamping to the fence of the crosscut sled and of course you'd be jamming the jig onto the fence and that would be no good. So we're going to have to set up some kind of clever clamp mechanism here and that's the next job. I've put a three quarter inch bit in the router. Uh, the T-track is three quarters of an inch or 19 millimetres and I've done a test cut in this piece of wood here to get the depth. I'm not ready to remake my jig fence yet, so I'm going to route out underneath the holes that attach it to the moving carriage here and try the T-track out. Eventually I will remake it and I won't have quite so many holes through here because of course the T-track's holes are not going to be in the same place as the ones I put in to attach this to the carriage. I've reattached the fence to the moving carriage and drilled yet more pilot holes for the T-track. Now if you don't want to route out a channel or housing or dado for your T-track you can simply make up a sandwich kind of thing like that. You'll just have to size the edge pieces to the thickness of the T-track. I'll use a toggle clamp to hold the workpiece to the jig fence and I'll need a carrier to take the toggle clamp to some kind of T-nut which will go in the T-track. The uh, obvious way to do it to me when I first looked at it was to put it on this end but that would be creating a thread into end grain which can pull straight back out again so that's not very good so it will be this way around. And I have a choice of two toggle clamp arrangements. This one has the handle sticking out here when it's engaged. This one has the handle up here when it's engaged, which I suspect is going to be the better way to do it. And this one also has the greater range of adjustment. And I'm going to mount them anyway, because I don't have loads of these things and I may want to move them to somewhere else. I'm going to mount them into the block using some angle brackets like that so that I'll be able to remove them again reasonably easily. I'll drill some bigger 5mm holes into the bracket here to clear the outside diameter of the screws I'm going to use onto this sacrificial board. Well putting those neatly centrally that way was a mistake because of course there's an offset because of the thickness of the base of the uh, toggle clamp so I've remade them lower down so there's uh, more wood above them and now I'll mark up those holes again. A 
common thing to use for a T-Track is a coach bolt. Works very nicely. But there's no way of adjusting the depth that it's going to go into my block here. And I do want to be able to wind that in and out to adjust how much gap there is between the face of this and the face of the jig fence where this T-Track will be sitting. So I'm going to use this uh, headed bolt here with a little washer on it. Now, you want something with a flat here. I tried some of my pocket hole screws and they're all too small. You don't want anything with a conical underside to the head of your bolt or screw because of course the pressure is going to distort that but with something flat sitting in there whatever pressure you put on it isn't going to distort the channel unless of course you go completely over the top and outside the spec of the t-track now for making a hole in here as this is a bolt rather than a screw i should be making use of my absolutely rubbishy tap and die set We've all been there, we've all bought a set that we shouldn't have bought of taps and dies from one hung low. You just know, even as you're buying it, that you're never going to use it in a block of metal because it's going to snap straight off, but one quite often does want threads in a piece of wood and this I think is a M6 1.5 which will match no, nope, that's not a 1.5, that's an M6 1.5, yes, which will nicely make a threaded hole in my block. I've drilled a 4.5mm pilot hole in my block here, and I've drilled it quite deep because this tap here isn't even an intermediate tap, let alone a bottom tap. There's no actual thread cutting down at the end here to help you get started, so in fact the main thread's only going to be cut up here, so the hole has to be a little bit deeper. And of course you don't want to strip this out, so you need a little bit of pressure on it as you turn and one's habit is to back off slightly to clear the dust and shavings from the inside. And in fact I'm quite paranoid about threads, so I take it all the way out pretty frequently to blow out said dust. I didn't have a huge amount of 5mm plywood for my little boxes and these are the pieces I managed to get out for the first two boxes, the uh, two long sides and the two short sides for each of two boxes from the piece of 5mm plywood I had. And I've ended up with a joint width of 69. Now, if I could manage 3mm fingers, a repeating unit of 6mm or four threads, that would work out quite nicely for an odd joint, that is a joint like this where you've got the outside fingers each on one piece and this has to be cut with an offset. Now if I was to use a repeating unit of six millimeters then that would give me 11 times 6 is 66 plus 3 which just happens to be a half and brings me up to the 69. So that would be a whole number of repeating units plus a half a one. But I don't think I could do 3mm fingers out of plywood here. Solid wood, possibly, but not this plywood. So I'm going to go for the next size up, which would be 4.5mm, 3 thread fingers, or a repeating unit or wavelength of 9mm. And if I do 9, then 9 sevens are 63. So I'm going to need a half, and that brings me up to 67 and a half. So I'm going to have just a little bit to shave off a millimetre or two at the end if it looks ugly. It might look all right. So that's what we're going to go for. So we will need to introduce an offset, and I've also got a sacrificial fence here to go at the back of all this. So let's clamp that up. There were two toggle clamp styles I could have used. I initially thought this one would be the better one because when locked the handle would be pointing forward. But it's really difficult to operate and uh, the reach isn't quite so good as this clamp here, which is the one I'm going to use. One of the issues with the toggle clamp is that as you close it, there's a little bit of lateral movement on the bung here, which is a nuisance. It wants to move the workpiece and you have to work quite hard to prevent it from moving the workpiece. So there we are, four and a half millimeter offset. Off we go. Pattern's going to be cut, jump one thread and adjust the pointer from PM to AM. 
make another cut, reset the pointer and then jump five threads. These boxes are destined for the stockroom where they're going to tidy up uh, cartons like this. If they were going to be carried around I'd probably put the bases inside but as they're not going to be carried around I'm going to put the bases butting up underneath the boxes and I'm going to be using up some of my pieces of more horrible plywood.